Well, hello everyone and welcome to another episode here on the Emily Gardner channel. I hope you're all going to enjoy and you're not gonna to wanna to miss this, so stay put, okay? So what we're going to talk about today is the investability of a garden or creating a garden fund. It is so important to create a garden fund and I'm going to explain how to do it in some very simple broken down steps. The first thing that you're going to realize is that a garden is not necessarily expensive if you do it the way that I do it. A lot of times when people are trying to justify putting in a larger garden or they're trying to justify upgrading a garden, they look at the cost and say, man, I can't do that. I don't have the money that's available to just go gangbusters and grow big or go home. And it can cost a fair amount of money. For instance, putting in the garden at the cottage was about $700 initially to get the compost in to really get the soil kickstarted. However, just for a note, we actually produced about $3,000 worth of vegetables in that one year on that garden. So it definitely can pay for itself, but not everyone has $700 right away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain my method to creating an investment garden, which is the 80-20 rule. 80% goes into what we would consider a liquid investment. So gold, silver, a bank account, a CD, a 401k sometimes, but you want in your investment choice. Don't even worry about that, but put it in your investment choice. Something that if an emergency ever comes up, let's say your child has a, a, an issue, let's say you need to go to the hospital or for some odd reason something comes up or you crash your car, whatever type of emergency happens in your life, there needs to be money available so that you're not stuck. And sometimes if you invest all of your eggs in one basket and you put all of it into a garden, you might not have money available for that emergency fund and you can't get money out of a garden right away because there is a thing called liquidity business people use and liquidity is how fast something can be converted into cash you look at these plants here and for all intents and purposes they have zero liquidity you're never going to get cash out of them unless you sell the plants but we're not going to get into that this is just producing food for your family these plants will never have liquidity meaning the money you put in is never really going to come out in a, in a tangible way. So you wanna put money aside and that's where that 80-20 rule comes in. I would strongly suggest it. And so now we're going to go into how to persuade your loved one uh, or your mom and your dad or your, yourself into pulling the trigger. Break it down into a smaller basis. Don't try to do everything at once. And it's really, really simple. Take $100, okay? Let's say you're gonna say, let's say you have hundred dollars you're going to put into your investment. Take eighty dollars, put it into the bank. Then take twenty dollars and put it into the garden. Really simple. And then look what you can get for that twenty bucks. For twenty dollars, you can make a square foot garden, a four by four bed. Put all the soil in, grow the plants yourself, and for twenty dollars, you have a full filled square foot garden. Or let's say you want to invest in perennials. That's a really smart thing to do because that's a longer term investment. That's a long, long term investment that'll constantly pay for itself. That is a really smart idea. You can go down to your local big box store, buy a fruit tree for about 20 bucks, or get them on sale later on in the season, get like two for 20. Either way, you can get a fruit tree for about 20 bucks, and that fruit tree in three or four years is going to produce at least $20 in. in fruit, if not more. So you have to look at it in that sense and you build it slowly, build a bed at a time. Whenever you have money available, you build a bed or you build onto a garden. And that way it's not overwhelming and it's not going to burn yourself out and it's not going to use all of your cash right away. So now you look into the real numbers. I love looking at numbers because it's so, it's so important to look at numbers. If in terms of a long-term investment, let's say you put $20 into that fruit tree. In three years, that fruit tree is going to produce, let's say $20 in apples. $20 in apples is basically a 100% return on your investment. You've doubled your investment. Cost you 20 and you got $20 back, uh, so that therefore your investment has, has doubled. Whereas if you put $80 in the bank, here's what's crazy. That $80, let's say you get, oh man, I don't even know, the returns are pathetic nowadays, but let's say you put them into a bank and you get 2%, 2% APR. That means uh, every every year you're going to make about, ugh, 
gosh, I don't even know, like a penny and a half on that $80, which is horrible, 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 horrible. And so a penny and a half return on your investment. I can't even do the math in my head on what type of return on your investment that is. Uh, it's, well, it's about one, it's about 1% return on your investment actually. So when you look at doubling your investment, uh, which is 100% or 1%, which one do you want to put your money in? Then let's say year two comes around. The tree will produce another 20, let's say it grows a little bit, maybe even a little bit more, but $20. You now have doubled your investment. So you've now made $60, you made $40 on your initial $20 investment. How much money have you made in that 80? In that 80? Uh, you made about maybe three, four cents. So then your three rolls around, let's say another $20. You've now made $60 on your $20 investment. And let's say that $80 is still in the bank. You've now made about seven cents. And then year four, $80 in saved income, meaning you, assuming you eat the apples and you don't buy them from the store, on your $20 investment, and that $80 has earned about 10 cents. So you can really see that the $80 is now $80.10 versus the apple tree that you put your $20 into is now worth $80 by itself. It's already paid for itself and you're now recouping cost where you don't have to go to the store and buy the apples because you're producing them yourself. And that is the true miracle behind an investment garden. Once you can realize the amount of money that you can save versus the amount of money that you're actually going to get in the bank, it makes a, it's a no-brainer that 20% is totally doable and 20% will also get you the ability to produce enough food for your family over time that you don't have to do it right away. You can do it in slow, simple steps and it's something that everyone can look at because when you're only talking about $100, that's not all that much money and especially when you're talking about 20 bucks, it's definitely not all that much money. So hopefully you all enjoyed. If you do have any questions, post them in the comments box below. I really hope that everyone will start putting their money into an investment garden because it does not have to be complicated. It does not have to be a huge expense right away. And it can be something that you do in baby steps that will have long-term uh, long benefits. So I hope you all enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new and uh, hopefully you're growing bigger going home. All right, I'll talk to you all later. This is Luke from the MI Gardener channel. See ya.